Well, in string theory, there's only one elementary particle. And it's not a particle at all. It's a loop of string. Okay? And there's only one force in string theory. And that force is two strings can come together and join, and then they can split apart. That's it. Very nice, huh? Very simple. The beautiful thing is, is that different particles that we know of, like electrons and quarks and photons, basically, these are just the same loops of string vibrating or winding in different ways. Okay? Now, one very elegant thing about the superstring theory is that it automatically includes supersymmetry, this neat symmetry that helps with these cancellations. Okay? But even more elegant and important is that it automatically includes loops of springs, strings that vibrate like gravitons. In other words, it automatically includes particle quantized particles that look like gravity. So it's automatically a quantum theory of gravity. Okay? So it's great. So it's, it's a beautiful theory with lots of potential, but it has some serious obstacles. Okay? Uh, the first one is that these loops of strings are very, very small, 10 to the minus 33 centimeters. They're so small that you'll never see these strings in the biggest accelerator that you can even think of. Okay? You'd need an accelerator the size of the galaxy in order to measure these things. So we're never going to see these strings. This is very bad for, uh, for physics, which likes some data to prove things. right? The second interesting thing about string theory, there's many, but a very interesting thing is that the strings are only consistent if you have 10 dimensions, 9 space, and one time dimension. Okay? Now, we know there's three dimensions. One, space dimensions. Two, three, three right angles. In superstring theory, you have to have six other spatial dimensions to make the theory make sense. OK, well, this would seem like this would rule out the, exper the theory right now, right? Because where are they, right? But in fact, this may not be a bug. It may be a feature. Because, <laughs> because these extra dimensions could exist and just be curled up so small that you can't see them. Let me give you an example. If you take a piece of paper, flat piece of paper, that's two dimensions, right? I could curl up one of the dimensions into a little tube, right? And if I curled it up so small and you were going along it, maybe you'd only think there was one dimension. You wouldn't see the little internal dimension. And in fact, I could take a piece of paper and I could curl it up like a ball, or I could curl it up like a donut, the hole in it, right? So these six extra dimensions are hypothesized to be curled up into something so small that you can't see them. Now, why this is a feature is it turns out that these, the way these internal dimensions, these extra dimensions curl up, determine what particles are in the universe. In fact, you can show that the number, like a donut has one hole in it, that the number of generations turns out to be the number of holes in the curled up dimensions. Okay? So if you go back to the standard model of particle physics, you notice that there were three generations. Well, that says that these curled up six extra dimensions have three holes in the internal Calabi-Yau manifold. Okay? Well, that's really cool. So what that means, then, is that the, now this is empty space I'm talking about curling up. So once again, we see it's empty space that's determining things. The content of empty space is determining the fate of the universe and the topology or the shape of empty space. We have here like three generations. Nobody knows why are there three copies. The muon and tau are just like the electron, except with a different mass. Why are they there? Well, superstring theory says, well, it's because the way empty space curls up determines the number of generations. Okay? It turns out many of the other properties are determined by how this thing curls up. Okay? So, so if this theory is correct, the shape of the universe determines the most important quantities of the universe and the content. For example, in another universe, these internal dimensions might curl up differently and maybe you would have uh, only one type of electron. Or maybe you'd have 15 different types of electrons, right? Or you could have completely different particles in another universe by curling up empty space in a different way. Okay? How about another universe where instead of six dimensions curling up, leaving three big ones that we see, how about if five of them curled up, leaving you with a four-dimensional universe? Or maybe more with two-dimensional. All these properties of the universe that we just take for granted turn out to depend in superstring theory on how these extra dimensions curl up. Okay? So this sounds like science fiction, but what is true is that the properties of the vacuum are turning out to determine many of the most important properties of the world okay, around us. Now I should stop here. I should stop here. 
But I would like to finish by just asking whether all this bizarre stuff I've been talking about is actually important. Okay? Does anybody care? Does it matter if we know it or not? Is it ever going to be of any practical use? Okay? Well, the honest answer is I don't know. But it does remind me of a similar question asked to Michael Faraday by Prime Minister Gladstone of England a couple hundred years ago. Michael Faraday was the most famous scientist of his day. He discovered the laws of electricity and magnetism and some of them and how, how uh, wires could move. He, his inventions, his discoveries led straight to electric motors, generators, and then pretty, indir pretty directly to radio and all of electronics. Okay? So P Prime Minister Gladstone is touring the lab, he finishes touring the lab, and he sees the laden jars and he sees the wires being moved. He says, oh, Professor Faraday, this is all very well and good. But uh, can you tell me, is this electricity ever going to be good for anything? <laughs> and Faraday you know, was a curiosity-based researcher. He had, wasn't thinking about practical things. He says, I don't know. <laughs> so, so I'll stop there. <laughs>